What job position is 100% overvalued and overpaid? Gillette engineers. They took 5 years to go from 3 blades to 4, and they got the idea from reading The Onion. You joke. But there was a skit from one of the first episodes of SNL that joked about multiple blades on a razor. My ad director. He's never around. Automates his email. And he has his own company. So many id directors are not techs by any stretch. But just management that filled the void. They end up hiring MSPs to do the work. They pretty much balance the budget and approve requests for permissions or product purchases. To be honest that's fair though. You only need to hire the right people at that level. There isn't a Shio who's doing their best work in a data cupboard. If someone else is regional VP they are either drowning in responsibilities working 70 hours a week, or they have absolutely nothing to do other than collecting a check. I would expand this. Personally, call it the Michael Scott theorem, in any company of sufficient size. There is at least one layer of management that is completely useless, but kept around as a dumping ground for people who earned a promotion, but really should stuck to non-management work. Nepotism hires and people who definitely shouldn't have been hired, but are kept around, so the person who recommended slash approved hiring them doesn't get embarrassed. Ferrari strategist, you'd think out of pure dumb luck they'd eventually make a correct call right, you'd be wrong. It's almost uncanny, there's the standard strategy, and the risky one, and then there's whatever the F Ferrari are doing. Generally, US gov contractor positions requiring high security clearances. Entry level pay isn't that high, but once you're cleared other contractors will offer bigger bucks, because you can get cleared with them quickly, jump from one to another, wait two years, do it again, lather, rinse, repeat. I have a very close friend that falls into this category, he literally sits at a desk overlooking a beautiful lake, and once a month drives 60 miles to visually inspect a dam, like just drive to it and look at it. He always jokes, if you want to see your tax dollars wasted, come visit me at work his previous Joe Broad construction. I'm here for a potential change of career. So what have we got so far guys? If you wanna rake in an insane amount of money, then retire super early. You could do deep sea welding, especially on oil platforms and whatnot. You can make dollar sign 80k slash no. But, there's a pretty good chance you'll die. My mum from whom my mistranged works as the vice president of reward at an international company. She basically arranges contracts, so millionaires can get more money, and gets paid 189. Zero pounds a year for it. Even she thinks it's ridiculous. Gosh. Even the title of that job. Vice president of reward. Sounds made up. Like something you give an Epo baby to keep them busy. President of FIFA. Today. I feel gay. I feel disabled. I feel like a migrant worker. Lol. And I'm new in town. Vivek Garipali. Clover Health. $389. 6 million. George McCann. Bright Health. $180. 8 million. Mary Osklossa. Oscar Health. $60. 8 million. John K.O. Alignment Healthcare. $46 million. Vivek Garipali. Clover Health. $389. 6 million. Cloth stock. Trading $1. 20 slash share. Down 88. 19% on all time chart 400 million to drive a ref company into the ground. Where do I sign up? About two thirds of the upper level admins at the university I work for. I'm the payroll person at a state university. And I completely agree with this. The people in upper management aren't even in union protected jobs who in theory, should be the first ones gone, when we need to settle the budget problems we have. Instead, they were the only ones who got raises during COVID. Don't forget the popular, let's make everyone adjunct professors, take the money we save, and give ourselves raises. Oh, also, let's get rid of staff, and replace with terrible management software, so we can give ourselves consultancy jobs from the institution to draw additional salary. How do they pay for it? Lower standards and let ever more unqualified students in. One night I babbled three kids for about two hours or so. The kids went to bed when I got there. 
and the parents had left dinner out for me. So all I did was eat their food and watch their TV and pet their dogs. When they got home the mom paid me $100. I told her that was way too much. She said don't worry about it. I'm drunk. And then I noticed her fly was down. So that was the most overpaid job ever lol. One of the smartest moves you can make as a parent is treat those who take care of your children incredibly well. I always overpay my sitters they're worth every penny with the peace of mind they give me. My uncle was a commercial airline pilot. He described his job as vastly overpaid in normal circumstances and vastly underpaid in emergency situations. Don't most commercial pilots have to pay crazy money to do schooling and licensing to even start working? Most high paid jobs may be relatively easy one you've dedicated years to learning it. You're being paid for your investment in the skill and ability to perform it with ease. Can confirm. Approximately dollar sign 105 came and I've paid a fair amount back already during the deferred loan period. And I'm on the lower end for people who took out loans. You see guys doing $150 to $250k in loans a lot. Hospital CEOs and actually almost all hospital upper management. There are so many layers of management that many of them barely step foot into a healthcare facility ever, let alone ever speak to a patient. Yet all of them make 6, 7, 8 figure salaries plus mega bonuses. My hospital network CEO makes 11 million dollars salary not including bonuses. Which bothers me. But bothers me even more are all the board members and desk directly under him making nearly as much. It's hundreds of millions of wasted money paid to the people trying to screw staff out of good pay and screwing patients into paying big bills. I still don't know what big firm consultants do. I do consulting. It is just either outsourced office work or creating fluffy powerpoints to give executives an excuse to authorize spending. It's not a bad gig. Sometimes it's to tell executives to do what their internal folks already told them to do, but the execs don't trust their own people. My last job in college. Before starting my career, I was an overpass shelter staff for transitional housing. Since these clients were basically back up on their feet by the time they arrived, they were pretty self-sufficient. I was paid about 25% higher than other night shift jobs I could get at the time. And on most nights all I had to do was make one pot of coffee. The rest of the time I could watch TV, play video games, do personal chores, etc. The one job that I know was better was their overpass sleeper, since we had to have two staff at all times. As implied, this dude made a well above minimum wage rate to just sleep there on the weekends. The one I had at my last office job, I was originally hired to be the manager of a new project. But the project was never launched, and I had a long term contract. After 5 months of being paid by only clocking in and out without doing any actual work, someone saw me in the pool for available associates, and invited me to join their project as a frontline agent. Apparently it's a moment the database just marked me as an available employee, without mentioning the rank I had been hired for. I stayed in the company for 6 years, getting paid the salary of manager but with the responsibilities of a regular agent. I rejected every offer for growth I had, as I was only working there to pay for a debt. In the end, I made my money with very little stress, and left the company in great terms. Edit, thanks for all the attention. I really didn't expect it to get so much traction. Here's an answer to a couple common comment I've seen. First, if it was so good, why did I leave? Simple. This job had nothing to do with my own career path. A few years back my life basically crumbled to pieces. I got into some really bad debt, and at some point I just had to get a job. Even if it was an office job I didn't want. Worked for 2 years in another company, before I was recommended for the position in the one mentioned in my post. The day my debt was paid off was the day I presented my 2 week notice, and left in great terms. I was lucky to have a nice team around me. Second. No. I won't mention the company or project. It was as an analyst in a streaming app. No. Not the super big ones. What I actually did as a frontline agent was a hybrid of customer service and developer support. All text based. Third, it was indeed a very fortunate set of coincidences and I took advantage as much as I could. But I left due to my own pursuit. I'm doing good with my own independent endeavor. 
and no salary will be more valuable than my own sense of accomplishment of making a living out of what I love doing. Cheers. Reddit. We paid a guy slash company $10.000 to come and do a motivational speech at the school, which was supposed to improve kindness among the kids at school. It didn't work. Life coach. This girl I know became a life coach and charges dollar sign 300-500 per person for a 4 hour seminar that a friend of mine used to help her set up for. Friend said all it was, was 4 hours of her saying these people are great and doing yoga plus breathing exercises. And she had repeat customers and often 4 to 8 people per class. $2400 per weekend to tell people they are awesome and do a few yoga stretches. F wild. Mine. Lol but I'm not gonna tell my employer that. Whoever was in charge of that fuck up in Ohio. I was at a train museum with my kids one time that had this really cool kids area where kids could run model trains around. Switch cars in the yard. Etc. The whole time we were in there. There was an older guy running the trains. Nice guy. Talk to the kids. But really into toy trains. We left before he did. As we were walking out the door, a museum worker stopped us and informed us the man was the CEO of Norfolk Southern, just playing with toy trains at a museum. Woo la what a story, is the same guy who's in charge now? Anyone who makes a ton of money by inserting themselves into big transactions and charging fees as a percentage of the transaction, brokers, title companies, etc. Close bracket. There's the classic line from Trading Places, 1983, by Eddie Murphy to the Duke brothers, when they explained their business as commodities brokers to him. Sounds to me like you guys are a couple of bookers. In-house legal for a corporation. I basically browsed the internet most of the day in my office, maybe reviewed one or two standardized contracts, and occasionally sat in during a firing. I made $80k a year plus benefits. Edit. To clarify, I'm a paralegal, not an attorney and the work was limited to contracts and entity formation. I guess it depends where you are, and maybe my expectations were just wrong. But you made significantly less than I assumed most companies legal departments made. Do car salesmen really do any work anymore? Last time I bought a car I looked online, did my research, and knew exactly what I wanted, and basically showed up ready to buy. The dealer just gave me the keys for a test drive, then did the paperwork for me. You'd be surprised how many people just go to the dealership having done absolutely no research. You were a dream customer and 10% of customers are like you. I'm a project manager making dollar sign 200k and I'm about to take an after lunch nap. There are definitely some cushy PM roles. I've had gigs where I'm managing a couple of very easy projects and it's like 2 hour days. And then others where I'm getting blasted in every orifice for 8 hours straight. It's quite the gamble. Mine. I'm a DevOps engineer at a fintech startup. I write server configurations for $125,000 slash year. And I work about 10, 20 hours a week. Remotely. I keep thinking they figured out how easy my job is. And decided to fire me. And then instead they tell me I'm doing a great job and promote me. I smoked weed all through college and got a degree in philosophy and did not go to grad school. So how did you get into that job with that education? And what does writing server configurations entail? Thanks. Build your own home server setup. Learn it as a hobby first. Maybe get some certs like Calm Shire Server Plus or something. TV Preachers My job. I work at a Kiasco. I think it's the equivalent to a grocery store of my 8HS shift. I probably work one hour at most. Most of the time I'm watching a movie, reading or whatever I want to do, while I charge people. There are a few items I have to replenish. Most of what we sell is from big companies like Coca-Cola, PepsiCo or Arca, a candy slash chocolate provider, and they all have external workers that put their products in a particular order, mandated by the company of course. Granted I have a nice boss that doesn't bug any of us when there's nothing to do. He doesn't demand that we should always be doing something. I'm also allowed to bring my dog. Wish I could send a picture. I'm eating ravioli right now from the restaurant that's just besides lol. Peas. I still complain 
Edit, I consider that I'm overpaid, cause I'm almost doing nothing. So, many, MBAs in management, F me there is so much bloat in middle management. CEOs of hospitals, I say this as a nurse who continually sees them get bonuses. Despite us being short staffed, and getting 3% raises. Short staffed? Ah, uh, I believe you mean controlling healthcare costs. And that means it's time for another bonus admin.